Welcome back. This is lesson four of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 11. And in this lesson, we will deploy a custom scikit-learn image with KSurf. In the previous lesson, what we did is we took the churn prediction model, we trained for model three, and it was a simpler version of that model. We used only three features. So we trained that model. We used a specific version of scikit-learn for that, a specific version of Python. It was 3.7 and 0.23, I think, for second learn. And so we did that and we deployed this model. We were able to get the results. The problem with this was that we received hard predictions. It was just zeros without giving us any probabilities. That was one thing. And the second thing was that this version of second learn and this version of uh, Python are slightly outdated. So it would be better if we could use a newer version of Python and a newer version of second learn. So let us do that. For that, let's go to KSurf the repository. And what I will do is I will get this zip file. We can clone. We just can do git clone and that. We don't have to actually use git. We can just download a zip file with all the code. I think it will be faster than uh, using git. So I'll use wget. Now it's master. So let me make a directory. I'll call it KSurf and then move this master there. And now let me go there and unzip this thing here. Yeah, we have this KSurf master. This is our code. Let me remove the zip file, master zip, and then go KSurf master. And here in KSurf master, we have, if I go to Python, these are our files. So first thing I want to change is the version of Python. So it's scikit-learn docker file. So let me open this with VS code, it's simpler. So we have Python and then Second learn Docker file. Instead of that, I want to use uh, Python 3.8 because this is the version of Python we use throughout the course. Even though now there is a newer version 3.9, just to be consistent, I will use 3.8 as well. And then if I go to second learn server, setup.py, let me use second learn version 1.0. And the rest I will keep as is, I will not change. I want to create file git ignore and then put this uh, case serve there so it's not in git and git doesn't try to index it so i'm in this directory and let me just build this image so i will do docker build minus t and this is the tag it's scikit learn server or maybe case serve scikit learn server and then the tag would be let's say 0 0.1 uh, something like 3.8 version of python minus 0 0.1 so the first would be version of python and then the second version of scikit-learn then now we need to specify the file the docker file because we have a bunch of docker files here so we need this scikit-learn docker file and then the dot uh, meaning that we will use the current directory for that let's run that and now it will install the whole thing yeah, it finished. Let me copy this just for your reference. So we built an image. But actually, now the model that we have here, this, oops, let me go back. So the model that we have here, this model job leap, is actually a model that we trained for an old version of Python and an old version of scikit-learn. So we want to train it with a new version of Python and a new version of scikit-learn. Version of Python I have here is already 3.8. Let me check the version of scikit-learn I have. So it's actually a newer one. Let me create a virtual environment with pipenv for that because here I am already on version 3.8. So I don't need to worry about different versions of Python. And I like pipenv more than Conda. So when I have a chance and when it's easier to use pipenv, I just use pipenv. So I want to use it here. I'll just use pipenv install scikit-learn 0.1. And then we also need job leap and pandas. I think that's all we need. Let me install it. Have it installed. Now I do pip env run Python, and then the file we have here is churn train. It will actually overwrite this model.joplib, uh, but that's fine. Yeah, so if I check it right now, so this is a file that I just updated. Okay, so we have a new version of the model. We can actually use this Docker image that I have. We can actually use this to check that this model works. I'm just doing Docker run. For Docker run, we need minus IT, minus minus RM, then the version of the image. What we also need to do is uh, we need to mount 
this file to the slash mount slash models in kserve for that it's uh, minus v let me actually do it here and then i'll copy it so v would be i want to map something in the current directory and then the file i want to map is this uh, model job lib and I want to mount it to MNT models, it's plural. And then in models, it's model, not job lib. Let's try. I don't think it's enough. I think it will complain now about uh, something, but let's try. Yeah, so it says that the following arguments are required. Model directory. So model directory is this slash mount slash models. This is already a parameter to sklearn server. It's not a parameter for Docker. So why we need to specify it after the name of the image. The directory will be this mount models. Now, I think what we also need to specify is the name of the model, model name. And for us, it will be churn. Let's run and see if it complains about anything. Okay, yeah, it works. It was able to register the model and it is listening on port 8080. I think what we need to do is we also need to map this port to some port on our host computer. We already use port 8080. So I want to map port 8081 to port 8080, port 8081 on the host machine to port 8080 on the container. And let's run that. It works. Now I want to modify our churn test a little bit. So the URL that I want to use now, I want to change 8080 to 8081. Previously, we were sending a request to 8080. Now we have a new service, 8081. So we will use that. It will also send a host header, but this SK learn server will just ignore that. So this host header is needed for Istio and the rest uh, will just ignore that. Yeah, so we only need to change the port here and then the URL will stay the same. Now let me test it. Python churn test. And yeah, actually the whole reason why we wanted to do this is we wanted to output probabilities here, not hard predictions, and we forgot about that. So let me quickly change that. So we go to Python scikit-learn server, this model, and in model, we just need to replace predict uh, with predict proba. And that's it. So let me build an image for that. I'll stop this thing here. I will go now back to kserve Python. And I want to replace here this with, I can call it predict proba, then 3.8, then 1.0. It will be a slightly different tag now. Yeah, let me execute that. Okay, we have, we built that. Let's use that now again for testing. I'll replace this thing. So now again, let me go back a few levels up and then run it one more time. Okay, it's running. Uh, I will now send prediction. We get probabilities now. We have both probabilities, probability of being on churning and probability of being churning, but this is fine. I think it's more generic because let's say if we had a model that would predict three classes, then we would have three outputs here. So we can keep it like that. We can also go and change the code. If we go to this model.py, we can also do something like this here, like we did in the lectures uh, before. We don't have to do this. That's fine right now as well. So we can just keep it like that. Okay, we, we see that it works. So we can stop our Docker file. So this is how we test this uh, scikit-learn server locally. And this is exactly how we also test other case ser services locally, like Zibu server and so on. They are all very similar. And now what we will do is we will go to our churn service definition. So this is our YAML file. We will leave this untouched. Storage URI is still the same, even though remember we retrained this model. This model is trained for a newer Python and newer scikit-learn. And this is the same scikit-learn and Python that we have in this new Docker image. And now what we can do is specify an image here. Image will be, and then the name of the image. So the name of this image will be, in this case, scikit-learn server predict proba. If we do it like that and we try to run it and do kubectl apply, it will have problems fetching this image. And if we do kind load docker image, in my experiments, it didn't work. It was still not able to find this image for some reasons. I don't know why. So what I ended up doing was uh, publishing it to Docker Hub. So let me go to Docker Hub. I think my handle there is my name. And if I go here, yeah, so I have scikit-learn server. And 
tag is this one. So it's also Python 3.8 version uh, scikit-learn 1.0 and then it's predict proba. Let me copy it. It's a slightly different name, but yeah, this is the same image. So let's use that. And if we do this, for example, on AWS, we can also publish these things to ECR and just put them here and it will work. But yeah, I published it to Docker Hub. It's also not that difficult. Just don't want to spend time on that right now. So this is a patched version of scikit-learn server that we just did together. And let me do kubectl apply minus f now this churn service. And it's configured because we already have a version of that. Actually, uh, I think I have quite a good computer here, but I still don't want to let it use all the resources that are available. We can also here set limits of how much resources we allow this predictor to consume. So this is very similar to what we do in a definition of a deployment. So we here write resources and we write limits and this will let kubernetes know up to how much resources this service can consume so let me uh, say it cannot consume more than one third of a cpu and when it comes to memory let's say 256 max that should be sufficient for that now let me apply this kubectl actually let me check what kind of uh, services are running there already. So we have our churn service, we have our scikit-learn iris service. I want to remove the scikit-learn iris one, and I also want to remove churn one and just load it once again. Uh, actually, you see, we apply it here. Uh, maybe I will not remove churn, I will just update it. So if I update it one more time, what we should see is that it will have probably a version three here. So now it says ready false. It will take some time and then it will probably get a third version. In the meantime, I want to remove the scikit-learn iris. That's kubectl delete inference service scikit-learn iris. And now let's check once again. So it's still not ready. Uh, let me remove it as well. So I removed it. I hope it's uh, enough resources for it. So I'm not sure why it's still not ready. Now let me apply it one more time. Minus F churn service. So it created a service. Let me see kubectl get isvc. Okay, it will probably take some time. What we can also see is what exactly it's doing right now. We can do kubectl describe isvc in churn, then less. And it will tell us some things probably. So yeah, this is the image that we use. So you see that when I request for resources, there is limits and requests. So requests is how much it requests at the beginning, and then limits is up to how much it can go. And actually the request is higher than the limit. So maybe this is why I have some problems right now. So let me have requests here and limits, I'll just increase it a little bit. We will request one third of a CPU and 256 megabytes. And then we will cap this resource consumption at this amount. So let me try to do kubectl apply again. And let me see what kind of requests yeah, so now it's different uh, requests actually lower than limits. Let's see if it actually helps. kubectl get pod, yeah. So now we have a pod. So previously when I was doing kubectl get pod, there was nothing, but now I see that something is running there. And if I do kubectl get uh, isvc, then we see that this thing is running, it's version two. And where is our test, churn test? I again change it to 8080. Don't need to change anything else here. Let me make sure that this port forwarding still works. And now let me do Python churn test. Okay, we got our predictions. These are probabilities and these probabilities are coming from KServe. We were able to deploy a custom image to KServe and this custom image contained a recent uh, version of Python, a recent version of scikit-learn and the patched version of sklearn server with predict proba instead of predict. Now let me check if I didn't miss anything. So we saw how to customize the image and we saw how to run any scikit-learn model with KServe. Uh, one caveat here is
is that it has to be a pipeline because so we do just model.predict or model.predict proba. That's why everything that we have should be inside this pipeline. So if we have any preprocessing, it should be in the pipeline. We actually will later see that we can also put preprocessing outside of the predictor. We can use transformers for that. So we will use that a bit later in lesson six. And in the next lesson, we'll see how to deploy a TensorFlow model with KSurf. So see you soon.